Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack and Turn. I hope that you're doing well. I'd like to discuss When Adam Opens His Eyes by Zhang Jun Il, part of the Dalkey Archives Library of Korean Literature series. It's the third of roughly 25 volumes that were published. And I believe it's the first full novel that I've ever read from South Korea. It's almost certainly the single most disturbing book I've read this year, probably going back a couple of years. There are aspects of the novel that as I was reading, I had to totally dissociate from. Uh, it became very degrading, there was violence, there was it was extremely graphic and it was ultimately it just felt like a truly vile book at moments I was having to pull back from it and so I'd be very cautious to recommend the book to other readers but I did finish it I finished it because there were aspects that worked Zhang Jun Il showed a real capacity to fuse that dreamlike sensation through which we can process reality and allow it to bleed into that moment when we crash into reality in a sense if we're approaching a foggy mirror and then that moment when we hit it and that occurred multiple times throughout his book in a very effective way. And he also showed an ability to take that moment when we crashed into reality and use it to reveal how when, when that happens, the dreams we've often have can be exposed as nightmares. And so he's very effective at that. And I want to read a passage that shows just how effective he can be. Deep in the night I awoke screaming, sat up and sobbed. Fearful of the neon flowing from my eyes, I wiped them then smelt and tasted the tears, but they had no smell or taste, just regular tears. Relieved, I finally cried without restraint, sobbing like Adam opening his eyes to a fake paradise. My Eve was a prostitute. My room was always dark and wet. If I sometimes opened the window to let out the foul smell of books, I saw the world under the neon crosses befouled with greater darkness and corruption than was in my room. Because the fake paradise to which my eyes had opened was so frightening, I sobbed loudly. And that's a startlingly effective passage. What we have is a coming-of-age novel. Uh, we have an unnamed 19-year-old narrator. He's given the name Adam by one of his girlfriends. Um, and he is supposed to be studying for his university entrance exams to retake them so that he can get into a better university in Seoul. But he doesn't want to be part of the system. He doesn't want to have the same ambitions that his mother and the establishment want him to, to aspire to. He wants his own path. He dreams of perhaps becoming a writer. He mentions at the, the very first sentence, I was 19 years old and the things that I most wanted to have were a typewriter, Prince of Munch's paintings, and a turntable for playing records. Uh, and so we have the sensibility of, you know, J.D. Salinger and Catcher in the Rye, all of those sort of, you know, young, young adult, adolescent pushing against the establishment, pushing against the system. Uh, we get moments where he's, you know, focused on popular culture. We get to know the music that he and his girlfriends listen to. There are passages from contemporary poems that characters are writing. And so we, we very much get the scene. Uh, we get moments at like a dance club, things like that. And we get his sort of, this narrator and Sinjin John Gnil's commentary on the scene. Uh, if I had cared about her only a little, I should have kept what had happened a secret. Revealing all my shameful affairs in the name of honesty was nothing less than exhibiting myself as a disrespectable person, with the intention that she should know it, and fundamentally, this meant that she was not so precious to me. If a secret is not kept where it belongs, it remains nothing but mere frivolity. Our generation is one without depth. Failing to grasp the value of secrets, a generation existing within an information society based on the principle that every bit of information should be open. A society where, in the name of rationality, human emotions are killed. Uh, and so we have, we have a lot happening in what's a very short novel. But all of those sensibilities, all of those sensibilities that seem to work and, and are interesting to explore, end up fused with the sensibilities of the Marquis de Sade. And that's why I'm so cautious to recommend this book. Uh, there are passages that show very graphic sex. There are also passages that reveal quite graphic violence. Um, the, the attitudes can be very degrading and dehumanizing. So I'm very cautious to recommend this. In particular, at the, towards the end of the book, our narrator acquires a typewriter and then writes out a sentence essentially mirroring that first sentence. There's a slight difference. I was 19 years old and the things that I most wanted to have were a typewriter, Prince of Munch's paintings, and for playing records, a turntable to hook up to a cassette player's speakers. So there's a slight adjustment. But it's essentially the first sentence of the book. We then get The Seventh Day, which if you do read this, I would seriously consider maybe not reading The Seventh Day uh, story that's at the end of it because it really is a sewer of consciousness. It becomes, the, the violence, the, the sex, become much 
more uh, amplified and it can, it's extremely dehumanizing. So this is a cautious, cautious recommendation. But I'm very interested in reading more titles from the uh, Dalkey Archives Library of Korean Literature. If there are books from uh, South Korea or North Korea that you would recommend, please let me know. I'm, I'm very curious to read more and learn more. Um, this book didn't quite work. Uh, there were some passages I enjoyed, but on the whole, I, I didn't particularly find it quite as interesting or, or as much of an achievement, perhaps, as Zhang jun was, was aiming for. Um, but it did, of course, remind me of a few books. I couldn't help but be reminded of Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami, right down to the pop culture references, uh, the, the dream sense, uh, the moments that maybe don't need to be in print. Um, I was reminded in parts of the, the deep claustrophobia that exists in, uh, in Search of Lost Time, particularly in The Prisoner uh, by Marcel Proust. I had mentioned, of course, The Catcher in the Rye. I was reminded of several books that I don't have copies of because I've read them and I really dislike them. Uh, the Ginger Man by J.P. Donlevy, um, even Lucky Jim by Kingsley Amos to a certain degree. The, the graphic nature of the book did remind me of Die My Love by Ariana Harwitz, which I read um, earlier this year, but this felt so much more authentic and personal um, without feeling like a show. And then I was also reminded of The Bushwhacked Piano by Thomas McGuane, which is, a, a, uh, I think, a more robust Catcher in the Rye. I, this, this is a book I would recommend instead of reading Catcher in the Rye to many readers. It's a, it's a fun coming-of-age novel that still has its issues, but I think uh, our, our, our character here is a little bit more relatable and a little bit more interesting <laughs> and empathetic than Holden Caulfield. So by all means, please let me know if uh, you've read any of the other titles in the Dalkey Archives Library of Korean Literature. And again, I hope everybody's having a great week. Thanks.